uh, day two files and directories there will be but before we go into the um, files and directories etc so let's uh, go for the uh, let's go for the one first amount and you will see oh let me ask you what you actually remember from the day one so please uh, click a link i mean if there will be uh, just a second if there will be the newcomers so there was a link that you've got from the um, from enrico and if there will be if there is someone who heard <clears throat> who is not uh, who hadn't uh, heard anything from yesterday so here is a bunch of links over there and one of them is the pressamo and this is where i keep kind of interactive uh interacting with the, our audience and so what i'm when i'm saying that the pressamo link please click pressamo links or basically i'm saying that click this one and see what's there will appear so at the moment i am trying to ask you what do you remember from yesterday and please click it you can click multiple you can make multiple choices and you can change your choice on the fly just read it carefully and see what you are up for People slowly but surely waking up. So to the newcomers, they have appeared seven people at least when we have started. So we have the pressimo. If you go to the pressimo and try to make your choices. So kind of a reminder from the yesterday before we go for the next sessions, uh, for the next sections. You remember probably from yesterday that we went through a very general description what the bash is, what's it up for. Then we went to the site that um, when we already touched already some of the comments that you can run from the command lines and that the amount of comments that we ran last time was pretty much enough to survive overall. To feel good, or at least don't uh, feel yourself as a guest. We even have created the first um, bash script as such and then we quite deeply went through the processes what is how to monitor them what kind of utilities are available how to kill them how to work with the background and foreground processes and we even mentioned some utilities like screen and see mocs okay i'm still waiting for some of you there are at least 32 uh, in the Zoom, so I expect that at least 28 of should be not us. And again, introducing ourselves. So it's uh, along with myself, there will be uh, Enrico, Richard, uh, Mira, and Thomas. So there will be five of us also helping on the Hedgehog. So I also. So do not hesitate to use the uh, hedgehog. So it's leave and now the day one has been already kind of collapsed. So now we're using the day two section. And so if you have any question, if you have any comment from yesterday, or et cetera. So please don't hesitate to ask over here. Okay, anyone else? So there are 22 replies. Should we wait for 25 at least? And then we will continue. Then it's a kind of sign to myself that you are already in and not sleeping at least.
let's wait for 15 seconds more. Meanwhile, I will copy paste it to the chat. Or do I have chat? Yes, we do. It's actually in there already. So just, and here is the link once again. So that everyone who has just arrived can see it. So we already 25, uh, 24 still. Okay, let's go anyway. Let's don't wait anymore. So what do you remember regarding the process and bash from yesterday? Bash is an interface in between and using an operating system. So everybody has got this idea. Okay, that's cool. 24 replies, uh, that is true. Bash can be run natively on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. It's not fully correct. So it can be run on Linux and Mac OS, but Windows doesn't have any kind of native bash. It's still a kind of... Um, and VSL, this Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, and git bash it's the implementation uh, but it's not a native shell so to say windows has its own native shell it's called powershell i mean if you're up to do something uh some kind of shell scripting with windows it's also possible just try to google for the powershell scripting uh, a user may invoke a man page by issuing the man command exactly man stands for the manual and a man and then the name of the command, and you will get the uh, screen of text uh, with the kind of uh, summary of what this command, command can do and what options is there. And even some of them have the ready to go examples. Uh, PS. AUXW list all the process running on the system that belongs to you. It's almost correct but it's false in a sense that it will list all the processes not only yours i mean if you want to run only yours then they just put minus u and their username and then you get everything what is <clears throat> on behind your behind your real id a user can stop kill any process with the kill command it's not correct so three of you still think it's correct it's not uh, the issue here is that can any process so it can user can kill only the processes which he or she owns uh, but no one else otherwise the 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 security of the system would be really compromised if everybody would be able to kill the everybody's processes okay let's go to the actual material so i am here on this uh, on the github it's our linux shell uh, tutorial you have a link also on that notes and now I'm going to the files and directories. So uh, let's see what we have over here. So I'm, I was talking about yesterday about the processes and I named that these are two big instances that you're working usually with when you are logged into the, uh, to the computer with the terminal. So it's the processes and then the files and directories. Uh, files and directories is even bigger in a sense, and we spent more time on this. And most of the utilities, they actually, and the list of the utilities, the utilities that allows that allow you to work with the files and directories is a little bit longer, and not a little bit, way longer, as compared to those uh, lists that can to manage the processes. Uh, file is essentially is something that contains data. Now data or data, they can have different formats. It's the uh, the idea is pretty much everywhere on all the operating system, be it Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. And so sometimes you will need a special program to open or to deal with that format or that or another format. But along with the content, which is uh, a kind of object data in the file, you file also has lots of the meta information but meta information when we are saying this in the it department so we are talking about the name of the file permissions timestamps uh, 
who is the owner of the file, etc. So there are some others. Um, uh, this is uh, you must understand so that this mes meta information is always part of the file. And then on top of that directory, directory technically is also a file, but from the user perspective, this is something where kind of other files and subdirectories can be, uh, that can consist of other subdirectories and other files. So it's a kind of folder for technical, I repeat, it's also uh, a file. And so in practical aspect, that means that it also has lots of the meta information like again, timestamps, owners, permissions, and names, etc. And the first file and the first command, uh, the first command that you get uh, to run when you're thinking of the files, that's definitely ls, which stands for the l for the listing. ls as such gives you nothing else than just a list of the content of the directory. But then if you look at the man page of the LS, you will see that it will provide you quite a list of possible options how to expand the listing of your directory. So in the first one to use is LS minus L. So here you will give or you you will be getting already quite a bunch of information with the meta files, with not not only the files itself, the but also the meta information. So and let's go briefly through what you see with the ls minus l. At the end comes the file itself, name. Then that's the last time has been modified. Here you go. Then size of the file itself. Then the group users that kind of own the file. Then the user itself, which owns the file. And then on top of that, that comes the permissions. There is another one column over here. I'm not going deep, but here's the number of kind of number of links. We will touch it uh, not today, but in in spring. So no, not important at the moment. So another one thing that you may remember that you may want to know is that there are some special files, special files which are starting with the dot. So some files which start with the dots. So let me go to my home directory and you can see that the list over here will be even longer overall. But then there is something which is missing from this list. And these files are called dot files or hidden files. And to see the whole content of the directory, including those hidden files, you must put A, capital or small one. Uh, both will work and there is some difference but uh, differences uh, only that uh, capital a will give you everything without double dots i mean the parent directory and uh, and current directory but then capital a will give you only the content of, content of the current directory and so now you can see that actually you have very longer list than usually so you have a bunch of the this dot something what this stands for dot something this is uh, the more or less traditionally these are the files which are used for the initialization for the configuration and which are not supposed to be edited or deleted somehow or accidentally or not by the user so this is uh, the programs or bash itself for instance it creates lots of different stuff like bash if you look at the uh, ls bash dot bash something you will see at least bash history you will see bash profile you will see bash rc there could be others as well so these are the kind of configuration files which are by default hidden and the purpose of uh, hiding them is just that you do not delete them or do not edit them or do not overwrite them by mistake so but they are there nothing to worry about usually uh, they are small so they can go up as well and they even that usually you don't really notice them but sometimes you still want to check them and uh, see that what's the size and whether anything that you can delete especially if you have a quota but let's not go any deeply uh, to that so one thing 
when you're talking about directory and file, when you do a list minus L, uh, let me go to the demo space back so that the list wouldn't be that long. Uh, LS minus L once again. And so you can see it's native, it's quite compact, uh, and you have only a name of the file. But the way those files are organized is called a file system. And file system, uh, it has kind of system of addressing. And addressing uh, usually starts with the slash. So to say is, uh, a word about the path, path to some directory, path to some file, uh, this is the names delimited or separated by the slashes. So slash character in Linux file systems is the only character which is which cannot be used in the file names. This character is dedicated as a separator, as a delimiter in between file names and directory names and subdirectory names. And so, and by default, the root directory, the very first one, is going to be just slash. So when you type something like ls minus l slash, you will see the list of directories which come from very beginning from the root directory. And strictly speaking, as a user, you shouldn't care much about those. Uh, the only directory where you will have full access, write and read and search, etc., that will be your home directory. There will be probably some kind of mounts where you have something like project archive, archive or some remote directories mounted from some other services, etc. But then the rest of those guys, like boot the PTC, uh, MM the opt proct, etc. So that will be not really for you. So you will not touch it. it, will be used by the system. That's the installed software. That's the uh, <clears throat> some uh, some some processes, some log files, uh, some binaries which are collected in there, and so basically used by the by the system. And system that's not new actually for the for the Linux as such. Uh, on the Windows and MacOS, it's pretty much the same. A user only has access to the full access. I mean, to the home directory and then to some other directories, but then the rest of the directories is just hidden somewhere and used by the system. Linux is no different from that. Why I'm saying all this? So one of the comments that we used already uh, yesterday was PVD. That's the one that shows you the current directory path. And so I'm here, for instance, uh, and this is my directory where I'm currently in. So demo space, that would be the subdirectory inside of my home. And my home is looking like this. It's a little bit complicated on the normal Linux system. I mean, the standalone Linux system that would be just home and that's it. But since we are at Alto and I am on my Alto workstation, so there are thousands and tens of thousands of users. And so this is a little bit more complicated than, uh, than on the standalone system. But anyway, let's just leave with this and just remember that this is your home and you shouldn't really be worried whether 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 the cryptic uh, notation is coming from. So the uh, one thing to repeat once again, slash is a delimiter. So basically everything what comes in between slash, that's the name of the subdirectories, another subdirectory, another subdirectory, and the directory itself. And then what comes last, it could be a name of a subdirectory as well, or could be a name of the uh, name of the file. And the next thing is that when you see the path that will start with the slash, and that will be the full path, or in other words, we are calling it absolute path. Uh, there are options. Option is that if this file is um, given like, for instance, like this uh, name, let's say name of the file, what am I looking for? Let's demo space. Okay. So let's say uh, let's say I'm looking for some file name. 
yes and when i am dressing it like this without any path this is called a relative path why so once again if i put the slash at the very beginning then my file system my linux it's not even bash it's linux which will expect that this file will be part of the uh, will be just in the root directory and so when i get this ls slash file name of course i'm getting the so no such file of the of directory so if i want this to be correct and i want to say specifically the absolute path to the file name i should put the whole long path from very beginning of root and blah 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 all the subdirectories and only at the very end the file name in this case will system will find it correctly and you will see that okay so the file is there no error has come but this is usually not the way we do this so usually when you go to some directory when i for instance now in my demo space usually what you do is that you start searching the data or start list uh, listing the files from this current directory and so the path which is like this for instance will be just the relative path and the bash and the linux itself will assume that actually when you ls and some name and this is a relative path you are starting searching for this in your current directory so that's the thing to understand and to remember uh, that's not it so there are other technical things we will use them a little bit later but within bash you can see several notations that can be used uh, uh, to simplify your life for instance one notation is double dots double dots stands for the parent directory so when i say something like cd double dots i don't know the name of the parent directory or even if i know the name of the parent directory it's enough for me to know that the parent directory is always the double dots and so voila i will go back to the directory which was the above demo space okay let me go back to the demo space another one thing is that uh, dot stands for the current directory so cd dot doesn't make much sense because you are already here you are already in the current directory but then for instance if you want to address a file like um, you remember there was the our uh, hello shell file which was the our uh, first command at first ever script so here when i am trying to execute that hello.shell i am saying explicitly that my file is in my current directory and this is why i'm putting this dot slash hello shell at the very beginning so that's the relative path for the execution and you can see the system can find it if i do it without this relative path system will not find it so the system doesn't know that uh, it should look for the uh, for the file in my current directory so that's the thing to remember that's a special notation another one to strand is the tilde tilde you can type it on the finnish keyboard you have to type you have to press uh, right out and then tilde sign and then press some space or whatever so you will get it out tilde stands by default for home so whenever you see something like cd tilde you will go to home uh, truth is that if you run cd without any option you will be redirected to home but why tilde is yet useful sometimes you don't want uh, say that i'm somewhere deeply uh, let me say that i'm somewhere deeply in i don't know let me see that i'm in skip what a keep from some previous years um, okay so i'm somewhere you see that my file uh, my directory is somewhere else so i want to go back to the demo space but i want to go directly from here and i don't know how deeply i am on the tree of my file system so i can use tilde so when I'm saying tilde here, 
I'm saying to the Bash that please start from the from my home directory and go to the something which is where I want to. So Piglet is always uh, can be useful this way. And quite often you can see that uh, abbreviation that tilde just stands for the home directory. It's used within the variables, can be used within the scripts. It can be used like this from the command line if you know that, okay, in your home directory, there is some other directory where you go to or some files that you want to launch or invoke or whatever. So that you will go it for the tilde. Okay, so this kind of stuff, it's um, uh, more or less uh, from the web page. I gave already this one and this one. So let me uh, let me show you that, for instance, LS, yeah, uh, LS has different options, and you may want to try to play with them. And but I want to mention at least a few which can be useful. LS minus L, you already know. LS minus capital A, you already also know. But then you can also use something like lst for instance or lstr which says you that please all the output that comes should be sorted by time and in the course of models so whenever you see something which has been modified recently and that would be sorted on the timestamp okay that's the ltr that's one of the then if you want to sort them just based on the uh, extension of the file that would be the minus x so these are the few if you want more just go for the uh, man ls and see what else ls can show you okay then i want you to send back to the screen uh, to the pressimo and let's see that what you already got out of this so before we continue please just take a look at these questions and see what you what you actually remember it. So you see I'm trying to wake you up all the time. I know that you're after lunch. And so don't be really sleepy. It's coming along pretty good. So let's continue. So I, you've got it pretty well, I would say. So slash is the only character that can be used in the file directory, correct. So all the other characters you can use, uh, but you will have to use the quotes, etc., cetera, or something like this. But then there are some other special characters, of course, but again, you, you can use them still and they can be readable. All files will have owner permission name time step exactly. So this is what we call the meta information. File name must be in the lowercase. At least one of you think that that's still correct. It's not correct. File names can be any. Uh, it can be in capital, it can be whatever. As special characters, as spaces, etc. File or directory name that starts with a dot is a hidden name. LS will not list them. That's correct. So ls minus l will not list anything which has a, a dot uh, as a first character in the file. And so that means that you have to use ls minus l a b capital or small. Hidden dot files can be seen only by root. It's not correct. So hidden file, even if it's called a hidden file, it's not really hidden from anywhere. It's just a file which has dots in the, at the, in the beginning of the name. So it's nothing to do with the root privilege as such who are as a user you can have the hidden files in your own directory as well only root has full access to all files on the local file systems that's fully correct so everyone who has the 
root privileges. Again, probably I didn't mention it properly, but root on Linux, that means equal to the administrator. So basically when we are talking about root, that means that this is the username for administrator and that's the most common notation on the Linux system. And the last one, regular user may not access anything outside of her home folder. It's not completely correct. And what I was saying that your home, you have full access. By full access, I meant uh, read, write, and search permissions. So, and you're kind of the owner of that directory. That's the correct, that the regular user is the owner of that home directory that belongs to him or her. But then uh, the others, they can be, uh, access can be restricted only, for instance, only for reading. Like all the binaries in the bin as uh, in the bin directories, they are readable. You can change them, you can't modify them, you can't delete them, but you can read them and you can execute them. So you still have access. And actually, there are lots of kind of files that you still have access, but you can't just modify them. Okay, let's get back. Special characters. Special characters. Uh, that's already to some degree mentioned, but then on top of that, um, uh, let's see what we have here. So I copy paste these guys to my uh, to my command line and explain it just from the command line. The wild card that means that can be replaced with any character. The question mark that means any character but only one. A wild card that stands for any amount but this only one. Then the um, square brackets, square brackets, that's grouping. So in case of square brackets, you can put something like A, B, C, A, and that would mean that this particular character can be A, B, or C. So only one of them, but not all three of them. So it's a grouping of them. In the same way, you can put one, two, three, or like, or it could be one dot four, five, B, S, F. So that means that this character, which is within this, uh, replaced by this group, it could be one of those listed within the brackets. And then that's also grouping, but that's negation. So basically, if I put the exclamation mark, then that means that the character that I'm expecting to be here is everything else, but not C, V, or B. It's this particular example. Then the... <clears throat> this is a file, remember, that's called the brace expansion. I can be wrong, but uh, it's, uh, it has some kind of name, this uh, curly brackets. Uh, we will now go to the examples. You will see how to use it, but uh, just to see. So now it's um, how it's um, different from the grouping is that here you actually have the combination of characters. So what I'm saying here is that my next part of the is ABC all three or X, Y, Z, or then if I want something else or one, two, three, or F, G, C, F, six. So that can be any five, six. And um, so basically I'm saying that that can be any combination of these listed over here, uh, delimited by the column. And then the last construct is that when you want to list the, um, um, the numbers from one to ten, but you don't need to put them the way one, two, three, etc. So what you can do, you can just say that from one to ten, and that will be understandable for the bash to expand it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go for some examples. So uh, I, for instance, I want to create a directory that's the directory would be command make dir okay and let it be my first directory and call it dir make dir dir eventually well let's make another one folder or oh, even nicer so you can see that in my demo space i have now two directories dir and folder it's not so impressive but it will become impressive when I will try to do something else. Like for instance, I will try to create a number of directories using the brace expansions. So let me say that I want folder 
but then I want a number of them. And for instance, one of them should be folder A, another of them should be folder B, another of them should be folder C. Let's see what will happen. You will get three different folders, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, which have been created just like this. So that's the kind of magic of this syntax. Okay, let me put another one, like Irene, for instance, X, Y, Z, yes, but I want just X, Y, Z, and I can type it this way. And what we will get is that we should get, I guess, X, Y, and Z. So you can see that notation also works if you just know the sequence of the, uh, the sequence of the letters. In the same way, you can do it for the files. For the files, so when you, for instance, touch touch a file, it will create an empty file. So you can see that this empty file has been created. The size is zero. The name is there. Time, some default permissions, and my credentials. Okay, but then in case I want to create a, again a bunch of files, and um, let's say it will be one, two, five, yes. And let's say that it will be some TXT files so that I know in advance that it's going to be the TXT text files. So I'm touching them, I'm looking at them, and you can see that now I've got the five files with the TXT extension. Okay, so now I have a bunch of this stuff and that's enough for me. You can actually do the combination as well. So if you wanna think that, okay, let me touch some more files, TXT, and I can even say that, okay, it could be uh, D and let it be C, whatever just something what comes to my mind immediately. And so what will happen over here that we are getting actually not five, but 10 files. So what will happen with this notation? Bash will try to first, here is come, here comes the first character. It's replacement for one single character, but it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be four, it could be five. Okay, here comes another character, but it can be D and C or C, no, sorry, not and, but or C. And so that means that I will have two files, which will be one C and one D. There will be two files, which will be five, two, and uh, <clears throat> C and D, two D and two C, three C, three D, three C, three, four D, etc. So that's the kind of magic if you want to create lots of stuff. In the same way, it's a magic when you wanna see something for instance um uh, what kind of examples i have had somewhere well uh let's see that we have in the root directory we have uh, two directories which are called bean and as bean uh, so we will go to the right of the user for instance yeah so we have two directories over here as being and being itself. So what's the way to do the, to list them at with one shot? So you can of course do it like this. And Ls will understand it completely, but you are lazy enough and you are smart enough. And then you can say, okay, it's actually can be S or can be nothing. And that would be enough to list both directories at once. They are pretty long, but just try it on your own. So there is no error message. So what has happened is that LSS bin has done it the way. So I'm here just exporting this and putting this. So this notation has been expanded pretty much like bin and USRS bin like this. So that's the last way you can use it. Then what else we had? We had the 
something like this. Let's continue while playing with the SBIN. So for instance, I want to list all the binaries in the USRB directory that will start with the, I don't know, with the A. And I can say here that it can be A, for instance, B or C, let it be this way. And then I put the wildcard and say that everything else, it doesn't matter. So I'm only taking care about the first character. And voila, you will see that I will get actually the, so the list is pretty long. So let's have some better proof. Let it be X, Y. Hopefully, the, no, X, Y is probably yet another one. Let it be W and Y. So you can see that actually I'm only listing over here the comments that will start with a W and Y and nothing else. In the same way, you can use it actually, for instance, if I think there should be uh, anything but not starts with the A or uh, that will be a list again. So now you can see that actually I will get everything else except the ones which would start with the small a, b, c, d, uh, blah, 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 t, y. So, and here I am getting all the information. Actually, interesting, let's try to see that. Is there anything which is not, uh, which doesn't uh, start with the, uh, with the, with the, <clears throat> uh, with the letter? So you can see that actually there is a bunch of stuff in the USRB and the SB directory, which doesn't start with the letter. So there is some kind of uh, interesting. So I need to check it out what that stands for. Then some with the uh, with the number, some with the capitals, etc. Capitals, and then some. Okay, they also start with the capital. So not to get it confused, but to get the kind of impressed once again about the powerful of all these notations that you can use. We will play the, the, with them during the uh, during the exercise session, but just to see, okay, that there are lots of kind of uh, things that you can do and make make your syntax of uh, when while you're working with the command line uh, way more compact. One more thing that I have to mention over here is quotation. Quotation is actually important because, for instance, if I create a file in my demo space, which will have a space, like, yeah, my file, for instance, dot txt, what will happen over here is that you will see it will be created two files. There will be created file txt, and then there will be mine. So it's not exactly what I want. If I want to create something which is uh, uh, which name will be my file, I have to use the quotes. That's one option. Then another option is to use the double quotes. I will explain the difference just in a second. That also will work. My let it be my second file. Okay, and then another option is that you make the quotation for the special characters and the space is a one of them. You can use it explicitly with the uh, backslash. Okay, and so now I will have all three files over here. My file, my second file, my third file, they all have been created using these notations. What's the difference between the double quotes and single quotes? Single quotes, they take everything as is, and they just, whatever special character will be inside, it will not be interpreted as special character that will be used as a normal character. But the double quotes, they will try to open everything what is inside. And for instance, if you happen to have uh, um, a variable, like example, my, and I put here user. What will happen is that this variable user, my username will be replaced with my username. Let's see what will happen. Okay. 
so my then my username then something which is at the end comes and try it with a different way with the single quotes with the single quotes you get exactly what you try to get so but not uh, but the user my user variable my username variable has not been expanded so that's bad but that's just to remember that these kind of things may happen and now just keep it in touch uh, keep it in mind so now i was about to to mention you the number of comments which are about which are around and then these are comments like um, cd you know it already so when you cd you change the directory you choose the directory and you cd over there then if you go back you go back make the you already know that as well so you make the you create a directory all the 36 okay then copy these are the something which haven't been touched yet so uh, only touch itself has been touched but then copy uh, then if you want to copy a file file for instance and i want to make a file dot let it be new so the copy will happen that you will get exactly the same copy of the file so basically you will have uh, two uh, two objects uh, on the file system file and file new difference between if you don't want to have uh, two copies of the same you may use move move is a kind of rename so we don't have a rename command over here we have move command and you can use move file from one directory to another you can use it move one directory to another one sub directory to another or you can move it also to rename so if you move your file or directory within this same sub directory it will be just simply renamed so if i want to for instance file rename it to the file new to I can do it this way and so you can see that ls l file and i say me okay list me only the files here you can see that actually file has disappeared but now i have file new which has been moved uh, the result of moving and then file.new which was the result of copying i have a bunch of stuff over here so let me introduce here the command called rm so remove be careful with that uh, because you can actually remove all your home directory so don't start playing it right away and every time when you try to remove something please think twice before press enter so but let me show you also how to use this some kind of stuff like for instance i say that remove everything which starts with the one but then comes a character after that and guess what you will see that we have lost everything like 1c 1d so they have disappeared from the list okay so let's say i want to do something more sophisticated i'm just playing of course there's no kind of sophistication over here but let's say that it could be one it could be two it could be three but it can also be something else but uh, for instance can be some any other character or no character at all so the problem with the uh, with this mark uh, with the question mark is that it does it's a kind of replacement for the character so it does expect some character but the wild card is expect any character or none so that's the difference between them and so let's see file back so again we have removed everything which have which have one two three and then anything else so again those guys have gone but then we have left the rest and actually we if we decide that we don't need actually anything of this one so we can just simply do it like this so we're killing the rest and now you can see that everything which would start the file and txt at the, at the end has been removed 
and we don't even need the uh, other stuff as well so we can actually do it like this we can always recreate it anytime by itself what's happening with the folder folder is a little bit more specific and actually let me before we go to the folder let me remove those guys as well so this is uh, you start it and you can see that uh, RM is trying to well it's trying to give a to, to play the game so let's see what it will do about the um, uh, about the spaces so there is rm my okay my is okay there is my user something my file my thought my second file so if you want to specifically say that okay there is a space after that you say you put the backslash and then only you continue and say okay remove everything what will have what will be looking like this okay we have removed only one single file you'll see it has disappeared and then if we say that actually we do not need anything which starts with the my we will delete it like this and I also have my several tests okay folders folders is a little bit special case if you say copy for instance dir to dir dot new trying to rename it you will get the error message simply because um, a copy by itself only can copy a file but then if you want to copy a directory then you have to explicitly say that please do it recursively so you do it with the minus r dear dear new and so let's see what has happened dear new didn't exist previously now it exists so now we have two directories dear and dear new rm doesn't do it either without anything else you will get the error message but then in this case you can also put the minus r folder and then you delete it and then if you want to delete all of them you proceed it in the way like this what am i done wrong I have renamed, I have deleted some files. Uh, oh, okay, I have somehow managed to kill the uh, uh, jobs, my background job, which has been updated to itself over there. I don't know why, but in demo space, there were nothing. Oh, okay, it's somehow the okay don't worry it's a demo effect okay so here we go we are still going the, the way so we can also remove the folder stuff like this so we don't need any of this actually you can remove many of them at the same time but again be careful so every time when you press something like this so you better be careful somehow it doesn't like when i'm killing the Okay, I will not do it anymore. Anyway, so we are now close to the uh, close to the uh, Pressimo. Next one. So let's see what you've got out of this. So go please to the Pressimo and click the next one. And then we will have a break for 10 minutes. So let's see what we have learned. There will be a break for 10 minutes and then we will be talking about the permissions and then after all we will be going to the exercise.
Yeah, it's coming very well. More than 27 replies. Five seconds more to react. Some of them are simple, but some of them still require some kind of logic and at least careful looking. Okay, let's go through the for this Presimo. The first one was a REM and the wildcard. It's uh, the statement was that it will remove all the subdirectories in the current folder. That's correct. Uh, that's not correct, sorry. So the as I just told you, RM by default will work with the files. And if you don't put minus R, if you don't put minus R, then that means that you will actually uh, um, you will see there are message try it i mean if you have some directory already you can try it out and see that what what will happen it will remove all the files in your directory but not the subdirectories and let's uh, minus capital a l uh, will list only hidden files it's not correct if you would put the minus a minus l uh, you will see all the contact on the directory including the hidden files actually there is no easy way to uh, to list only hidden files uh, you should script it a little bit. There is no option for this uh, with the LS. So you either list uh, normal files or normal files plus hidden ones, uh, hidden ones, but, but not the hidden only. So the tilde is for the current directory. It's not correct. Tilde is a home directory. So it's abbreviation, common abbreviation, common notation for the home directory, the directory which you are usually in. CD double dots. We'll go to the parent directory, correct. So that's the notation for the current directory. And then one uh, comment that I have used already previously, but didn't mention it today, but yesterday, and but you should be able now to already tell what it does. This is H minus HS. So it will give you the uh, kind of file and directory sizes one by one. And then you are saying exactly what you want. When you put the wildcard, you are saying that give me the sizes of everything which is not hidden but then you need to explicitly say that please give me everything what is hidden and what's happening over here what's this uh, uh, cryptic notation stands for if you put just dot and just uh, wildcard you will also get the this one the parent directory and that will be nasty. This usage will try to catch everything from the parent directory. But then here, what we are saying that, okay, my second character is anything else, but not a dot. And this way we are getting the correct answer. So we are looking at the uh, uh, space usage by the files and directories, all including all the hidden ones. So that's the statement is correct. So please, you you can even uh, write down this command somewhere for yourself, and so definitely you'll find it useful later. Uh, copying the PDF files, uh, that's correct, simply because that will be replaced with the ABC uh, and then with XYZ, and that will be every single number from zero to nine, and that's correct. So and then the PDF will be the uh, extension file and then the name of the file can be any after any which will start with the digit and it will be copied to a new directory so the perfectly fine working commands and description of what it's doing file or directory name must be quoted if special character characters are used correct so, so since we were just talking about quotation Yes, you ever if you ever do something with the special characters, please make sure that your quotes are there. Okay, now it's time for the 10 minutes break. Please uh, stretch your legs and we will be back to uh, in 10 minutes. So 13, 10, 10 after one or whatever time you have in your place where you are. I'm muting myself, but I also will be reading the notes. So feel free, stretch your legs.
uh, grab a cup of tea and then also keep staying all the material. Okay, let's get back. So there was one request to make it a little bit slower. I'll try, I'll do my best. Uh, yeah, but strictly speaking, I'm trying to put as much information on your shoulders so that you, it's up to you what you actually pick it up from the course. Totally. Okay, but I will try to make it a little bit slower. Um, so I told already a lot about how to use the um, uh, CD, maybe a copy move and RM, etc. cetera. Um, but that's the way LS also, that's, that's the way to kind of common way to work with the files and directories. Mm. One if you one if you uh, a few more comments. Let me say that tape A. I already told you about this, but so if you now from the perspective that you know what the path is and how it looks like, so now you can of course, for instance, get already information. Okay, where this guy is. So it's part of the USR being and somewhere in the less. So that's getting the information about what's behind the command that you are trying to execute. That's a good one. So another one, like file, if you want to know what kind of file it is, or let me say that do we have anything like hello shell, it will tell you exactly what type of the information, not the, not the information itself, but what type of the information or what type of the uh, mime, mime, so to say so, of the file that is. And then in the same way that if you want to know something about the binaries, so you can also ask about the binaries and you will get some kind of information. So that's the additional meta information about the file. But then there is one thing which is called stat. What's well, interesting is that you don't usually use it, but you may want to know that it exists. Stat will give you the kind of statistics about the file and along the in a sense that it's uh, advanced statistics as comparing to, as, uh, as comparing to the to the ls so you will get all the meta information about the file including the access file modify file when it has been changed very recently and then additional the blocks the io blocks and the number of links that the, the uh, exactly i note number etc so if you will be ever using this, uh, working with the file specifically on the Linux file system, you will find stat as well useful. So now I think I am done with the information, how to get the information, how to get the file, uh, in, how to work with the files in the directories, except one thing. That's the, okay, I skipped also the link uh, probably you will not it uh, you will not need it right now, but we will come back to this if you if you will find it useful. And then permissions. That's one of the things that everyone will probably at some point will will touch in the while doing with the files and directories. So uh, you remember when we say something ls minus l the very first column that will give you the permission information on the linux file system sorry <clears throat> on the linux file system uh, permission are exactly the same independently which one is uh, which one concludes the file system is in, uh, in usb it axt XFS, uh, be it Lustre or whatever, whatever else. So the permission system will consist of three different octets. So the first one will be the user one. The next three will be the group one. And then the last three, it's the others. So let me say it once again. I copy paste it over here to my screen. I commented so the ideal not the ideal situation but the full permissions 
they will look like this. So what they stands for? First, let's divide them like this. So the first part will be the owner, uh, uh, or owner permissions. So owner will have either read, write, or executable. Then the group which owns the file, or well, let's say owns the file. It also may have read, write, or execute permissions. And then the others, so not the owner, not the group, but the others, it will be also read, write, or execute. And altogether, it will give you the full range of the permissions. So it's a little bit uh, simplistic, but it works very well in most part of the situations. So we're not going now into the ACL. Actually, if I will have time at the end of the section, I will go to the ACL and advanced list, control list. But otherwise, the thing to remember, so file may have, may have in the classical notations of the Linux file system, have, uh, may have only one single owner, only one group, and then it can be also uh, provided or not provided uh, access to the others. So what else you must remember? So now I have in my, in my, so let it be like this. Now I have also in mind to say like this. So always uh, when you use a command to change the permissions for the user, for the group, for the others, you don't put the explicitly user or group or something, you use the notation. U stands for the user, G stands for the group, O for the others, and then all together that could be A uh, kind of abbreviation for all. So uh, basically you will use in most cases, in 99% of the cases, only those ones. And let's see that I have, a, I don't know, let it be a hello shell. I will use it as a test. So in order to change something like permission, I have to use the command change mode. Now I need to explicitly say what exactly I want to. So I now see that this guy has been giving permissions to myself, read, write, and execute. Then to the group, read, write, and execute and then to the rest of the people just read and execute. What I wanna say here that I don't want it to be executed by anybody else. I'm saying, I'm using this notation from here, O, that means others. And if I want to take a uh, revoke some permissions, I'm saying minus and saying that, okay, minus R ax. What will happen over here is that you will see that actually permissions from the others have gone. Uh, you will see it exactly over here, actually. So if you now click the hello, it will be forbidden because you don't have access anymore. So let's uh, try to get to get it back. So now I want to get it back and instead of minus, I will use plus, okay? And let's say that I can also, may also want that actually group shouldn't have the right permissions, uh, group, sorry. And that would be this way. And now you can see that after two changes over here, uh, my group doesn't have right permissions. Uh, everyone else can read and write. And I can still read, write, and execute. If you actually go back here, you can see that, okay, now you have access. At least I've got access over here with no problem. So what uh, else to remember? You can group this uh, changing of these octets. So in the same way, you can say user mean minus uh, uh, write permissions, group minus write permissions. And then for instance, others minus all permissions. It can be also done this way easily and you can see what will happen so it's exactly what i asked so i removed the right permission from myself and there would remove the right permissions from the from the group 
and then I return to take away all the permissions from the others. And so in the same way, I can return it back. But another one thing that you may uh, meet at some point is that these kind of notations are usually and quite often are written in the numeric form. And so read stands for four, write is two, and x is one. And so how it looks like in case of the change mode. So let me get back to the situation like right here. So I'm setting up permissions for the hello. I want to be writable, readable, and executable by myself. So that will be seven. And then I want it to be seven of how I got it writable four, readable two, executable one, two plus four plus one, seven. So I want it to be readable and executable by group, that's five. And I want it to be readable and executable by others, that's five. And voila, if I put it like this, and you can get back to the hello, you will see exactly what has happened, what I wanted. Uh, I would say that most of the people will use the notation like uh, this one, it's just for the sake of it's understanding, uh, understandable better. But then quite often you can also in the scripts especially see something like this. And so basically I'm opening this for you. Just do not, uh, just it wouldn't be cryptic next time when you see it within the script or next time you will see it on the Google on some man page. Okay, so that's change mode for specific file. What I forgot to say over here. I have forgotten to say that if you let me create some directory once again, make dir. And so what I forgot to say that the actual folder may also has uh, may also have this X bit over here. But it doesn't mean that folder ex executable. In case of folder, X means it's searchable. So you can basically, it's not even searchable, it's listable and searchable. So let me say that if I, um, for instance, I let me go to the folder and so that I create some files over here and let me say it will be five files over here, you see? Okay, I go back, I list folder and everything is fine. But then if I change mode and if I delete from myself, if I do it like this, uh, from myself, if I delete uh, X, let's see what will happen. Or let me say that I can delete from group and from others as well. I delete the search option. What will happen over here? I will not see what's in there. And so that's the difference between uh, X for the file, which means executable. And that's the difference between the X for the uh, directory. That, we, that means searchable. So I get put it back. And now you see that I can see it uh, once again, what's, uh, what is what is there and what, what's listed. Uh, this uh, uh, one, Another one, like for instance, I want to make the changes to the files in some subdirectory. I can do it also. Uh, and I know what my directory is called like this. Folder. Wasn't it? Folder. Yeah. Okay, change mode, but say I want to make the changes to all the files in the subdirectory. In this situation, I need to use the capital R, which stands for the recur recursive. So we do the changes to all the content of the directory recursively. So for instance, I want to remove from the group the right permissions. And I can say here, OK, it should be the folder. And another one useful option, minus V, which stands to be verbose so that we don't need to put ls out uh, so we can see already what's happening right away. So you can see that actually what we've done. So we took every single file 
which is part of that folder, and we grabbed that write permission from the group. Okay, you now you can ask me a question, why group is so important? In the many cases, uh, group is not important because you are probably something which you, are, you have something in your home directory and you don't care much about the uh, group ownership. But then if it's a shared one, and imagine you are in the situation when you are working in the project directory or your archive directory or some working directory where there are other group members, uh, there are other members of your group, I mean, physical group, something which is at your university. And then you may want to have access to the same directory, to the same file or number of files. And, but the owner can be still only one. Again, I'm talking about the classical file system in Linux. I'm not talking yet about the access control list. But in this case, it could be only one. And how to share this kind of thing is to make uh, uh, group owners, uh, give them the right to write, to read, and to execute the files and directories. And so this is the situation when the group actually becomes important how to change the group. So there is this uh, command, change group. The only tricky thing is that you cannot change the group. Uh, first, the group that you are using to change it must exist because default mine is domain users. That's for everyone at Alta University is domain users. But then uh, uh, if you want to assign it to a new group, it must first exist. The second one, it, uh, you must be a member of that group that you are trying to assign to. So how to find out which the group member I am? There is this uh, very nice command called ID minus GN, capital GN. It's pretty much the same way it should work also on your. So let's say that uh, I'm not going a, a very far away, so I pick up one of the group uh, that I'm using, and I do some changes to the folder. And I do the change group, and I put that my group name will be the one that I picked up recently. And let's see what happens. And has happened the thing that actually Every single, uh, no, no, not every single yet. Just a second. So ls ld to see my directory only. So you can see that actually my new group owner here became VASP. First, this group does exist. Second, I am a member of that group. And from now on, in principle, there are some details yet, but in principle, everyone who is a list on on list of that group? You can check it with the get and group command. I will not show it once again over here, just to don't compromise the other users over here. But just trust me, uh, if you try to see the the list of the uh, the, the the list of those uh, users, just uh, try this command out on your own. So just replace the VASP with some group where you member of, and you will see the list of the users which are on that group. But anyway, so all all the users which are on that group now may have access, read and X access to that VASP. And if I want to make sure that it's actually not only the uh, not only the folder itself, but also the all the content of the folder, I also set this minus R over here. And now you can see that change group owner from domain users to VASP. Okay. Uh, so that was kind of a dumb example. I don't really care. I don't really want fast people to be able to access my uh, demo space. So I can change it back. I can change it back. Where was it? Domain users. I remember that. So I can change it back. And so basically we are back to the back to the initial state. But now you can see that how you can play with the permissions, how you can play with changing group. There's another one command. It's called change owner. But 
in a sense that if you don't have the root privileges, you don't use this command never. You will use this command never. So nothing to worry about, not at least at this stage. Okay, so where we are. We are now very close to the exercise 1.2. And let's see that uh, how much time how much time we want to dedicate to this. Uh, actually, I have one person more yet to go before we go for the exercise 1.2. Uh, oh, okay, I also probably want to say something about UMask and SBIT and TB. But let's go for the person more first. And please open it and open it and the missions and let's see what's what we have. Again, multiple answers are possible as usually. And see what you've got, what you remember out of this sketch. Remember, yeah. So as usual, so when you click it, that means that you think it's correct. And when if you think it's not correct, you chance just leave it unclicked. Let's say we are waiting for the magical number 25, 25 replies, and then, then we will go further. Okay, so let's go for them. Oh, you still keep clicking. Okay, so let's go for them. File may have only one or correct, completely correct. Again, I'm talking about classical system, not about the ACL. I must say it explicitly all the time because the ACL is becoming, the ACL, this access control list is becoming more and more popular. And uh, but uh, still, the, the standard de facto is this uh, three octets for the owner, group owner, and the others. But anyway, an X bit in case of the file system means executable, but in directory case it means searchable. That's completely correct. That's true. Uh, change mode minus capital R or minus R W X D one will recursively remove read write exec writes from the dear owner. Uh, it's not correct. O stands for others, and owner that, that would be you, and in other words, user. So the, those of you who thinks that's correct, you would re, you would remove the read, write, and exec executable rights from the others, but from the owner. But anyway, it's a kind of thing to remember because actually I myself I sometimes just forgetting that which one is owner, which one is which is others. Uh, and then change own group name file does the same as change group group name file. Uh, my bad. I didn't say you anything about uh, change group and change own and how they correlate, but the thing, it's correct over here. Change own with the two doubles uh, with a column and group name file will do the same like change group. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct, but that's my bad. So I'm not counting this. If somebody didn't know that a user can change the group owner to any group 
uh, that's not correct. So I've said explicitly a couple of times, uh, two conditions to change the group owner. First, the group that you're trying to assign to should exist. Second, you must be a, a member of that group. So these are two conditions which uh, uh, which can be satisfied, which should be satisfied uh, before you should be able to do. You can actually try to assign uh, to non-existing group or to the group which you are not a member of. You will get the error message. Change mode 600 file PDF will make file PDF readable, writable for everyone. Uh, not at all. So to make it readable and writable for everyone, the last digit must be seven. Seven that would stand for the readable, writable, and executable. Uh, must be six, not sorry, not not seven, six. Readable and writable by everyone. But here we have at the end zero. That means that others will not have access either. And so the group members will not have access either because it's also zero. It's only the owner which will have readable and writable permissions to that file, PDF, file.pdf. Okay, and here is the core, this three octets that you would see it in LS minus L. And the sense that it means writable, readable, executable for owner, that's correct. And then readable, executable for the group, that's correct. Uh, that's for the group and no access for the others, that's correct. So they were the, first, the last one was completely correct. Okay, now what we have in mind, actually I was about to mention you slightly about S-beat and T-beat. You will meet this. You will meet this because we will go through the find comment and we will use it over there. So I must say a few words. So along with the readable, writable and executable, uh, you may also have uh, set git or set unit git, so to say. So the thing is that when, for instance, my, uh, let me do this trick once again uh, to explain. So my command is, uh, uh, my group is, my default group is domain users. And every time when I create a file, file test, you see that this file will be owned by that group, okay? So, but let me create a folder. Folder one, let it be folder one. And let me say that this folder one will be owned by WASP, okay? You see that this has been changed. Once again, it proof. Uh, folder one is the one which is owned by VASP. What will happen here if I don't put the S bit? If it's normal fol folder, then I touch, for instance, file, and the file will be just normal file with my default group as the owner. But what will happen if I put on folder the S bit? So what will happen over here if I do the change mode group plus s okay let's see what happens so you see that s bit was over here and uh, uh, folder is kind of set gated so to say so it's kind of so the executable bit is set for the folder and then if i next time trying to touch another file over here what will happen that this file will be already owned by the group wasp this s bit in the other words it gives kind of it provides the permissions uh, that it, or it forces the permission of on every new created file to be exactly the one which is owned uh, which uh, the, which group is or owns the owns this folder so the uh, feature is usable and interesting and especially usable on the folders like projects, etc., where you want to make sure that everything what is created under that file, under that subdirectory or directory actually belongs to the group. 
So that solves your lots of headaches, especially if you are developing something or if you're copying this stuff from somewhere and you want to make sure that everyone who is putting something to the directory, every single file, every single subdirectory will be owned by the group and group members will have access to. Otherwise, otherwise it may be a situation like for instance you have a directory which is owned by the right group and the group members have right permissions in there but somebody has uh, copied there something which is owned by his own personal group and no one else will have access to that file or directory even if the parent directory itself is uh, has the right permissions so that's why sbit is tricky and uh, and uh, good one. Another one, as bit can be set on the file. So let me see that uh, whether we have anything um, in the as bin, for instance. I guess the pink should be no. Uh, if the executable, uh, sorry. Uh, no, I need some command which would have as bit on top of that. So we can use find, of course, but I just need it for the sake of explanation. Oh, actually, that should be the probably the possibility. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there is this command, for instance, possibility. The trick. And you can see it, you can see that it has the uh, execution bit, uh, execution bit, and the S B set for the user. What that means? That means that every time when somebody executes that binary, the effective user uh, per permissions will be actually the owner of that file. Uh, I understand that probably sounds a bit cryptic, but the tricky thing is that you this way you kind of pass uh, through the security issues so that you do not allow everybody access to the, for instance, some files like PassVD or, or some other files. Uh, but uh, but every time when somebody runs this kind of commands it will get the officially the permissions of the owner of the command itself, which is good. And which is, if it's written carefully, it doesn't bring any security issue, but it only solves some security issues. Anyway, so that you know what the SB is, probably you will not meet it immediately. You will meet this SB for the groups that you find it useful, SB for the uh, binaries, that's something which is more to the more specific for the administration but anyway it's good for you to know just in theory that exists one more bit that is mentioned over here is t-bit it's called sticky one sticky one that only means that it will give you uh, for instance if you take a look at the tnp directory in your uh, on your computer as well it will have the sticky bit so sticky bit stands for the everyone has here permissions to write to that directory, but only the owner can delete and modify the files which are owned in that directory. So if we say again that, for instance, well, here it's myself only, or oh, not only myself, there is actually other users. So what's happening over here, I can, for instance, go to the TNP and delete this one and this one, uh, no, only this one, and then this one, but I can't touch this one as well. And this one, because it doesn't belong to me, neither any of them. So that's what's, uh, what, what's the sticky bit is for. So it allows, it prevents from removing file by another user, okay? And then the last thing about permissions then you, that you'd better know is that the, using the U mask, U mask is something which allows you to set the default because you know when I create the file once again uh, when I create the file you see 
that there are some kind of permissions are set. And these kind of default permissions are actually set by UMask. So there is a default one for the whole system on the system level, but you can always change it and put it into your own profile. How to do it? We will know only uh, tomorrow when we go for this uh, bash RFC initialization files. But just keep it in mind that it's also changeable. Okay, so now I think we are good enough for the exercise 1.2. And let's say that we dedicate 20 minutes to the exercise, and then I will dedicate 10 minutes to go through the exercise and see that how good we are at, at this. Uh, so once again, feel free to use the notes and feel free to ask the questions over there. And now the floor is yours and just show. And to those of you who hasn't been doing the exercises uh, recently, uh, tomorrow, yesterday. So what I've said that everything what is marked with the, uh, this with the star, that means it's kind of advanced. I don't expect you to do that, but only when you have done these ones, uh, then you can already try doing the rest. And if you have free time and if you are good enough at these things, if you feel like it's easy for you, so please go ahead. Otherwise, I expect that you at least will be done with those. Well, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, those first ones. They are simply, they are quite simplistic. So, but anyway, and press them all once again. I put this uh, exercise progress exercise progress somewhere I had it oh let me first create okay so it will be like this oh, let me create first okay it will be like this so anyway now you are on your own please go and do the exercises and whenever you are done on whenever we are close to the finishing of the exercise so we will continue at well we will be back in 20 minutes so let's see what we can do so that we can go through the exercise right away and then check it out what you have done correct and whatnot. So the first touch was uh, the uh, making the current directory in the current directory. So I am in my demo space. I want to about to make another one directory. Let's call it directory like this. And then CD there, CD there and touch a file. Okay, so now we are in the directory and we have a, just one single file. Rename it. Rename it is move file, file, let it be uh, renamed or whatever. It can be just up to your fantasy. Make a copy and then remove the original. Make a copy. Okay, then I copy my file, rename to the file. And then I remove the original the file rename like this. So I still have one single file, which is zero in size. What touch does? Touch by default, you can take a look, of course, at the manual page, but touch by default, if you know a file, it exists and just touch, it will does nothing except it changes the access time. I mean, touching means they're changing the access time of the, but then if file does not exist, like for instance, something, it will create a file, an empty one. Now we have two files over here. Okay, so the first is done. Then the second one lists all files in USR bin and S bin that start with non-related character with one ls command. So listing means ls minus something, but then we are saying that non letter character. So USR bin and S bin. 
how to tell it to be on the same string. So basically I'm saying it could be S or could be something which is empty. Basically there is nothing, so there is nothing in there. So that's the first thing. The second part of the task is that something with a non-letter character. So letter, in my case, I can use a, use a group A to set that. And I can even do it more expanded a to set the once again. And I can even put here the exclamation mark, which means the negation. So everything which is not like this. So, but again, by the end of the day, I have to say that everything else is fine. And here you see that I'm getting actually a list of cannot access something, which is it can be avoided. But anyway, here is a list of something which is uh, to me sounds I'm just wondering what's this one. Mm -hmm. On by root, the file is it strict. Um well, by mistake I have created uh, something, but I will check it out later. Why I'm always suspicious with something like this when you see something which is not a normal name. It's usually the hackers and the crackers which they are trying to put something into your file system. They create a lot of, uh, they have really good fantasy guys. So they create something with the dots, with the two dots, with the same names like normal binaries, etc. And so if you see something suspicious, it makes sense to check it out at least what's there. Okay, the second, the third one, list with ls not dot file directories only. By default, it lists all files directories, but not those that begin with dot files. Oh, that's already a good one. Okay, so let me go somewhere where I have the dot files. Let it be my home. So what am I doing right here? ls dot files dot directories only. So first of all, I need to list all of them. I know that ls cannot really uh, list only dot files. It can list all of them or only normal files. But now I need to uh, get out of this something, which is the, uh, no, now I need to put this, let me say that I need to put dot files but only those without the parent directory so let's see will it be okay and then i don't actually want the directories i can put the d as well so that would be the uh, that would be the trick so the LDA, what it says, so minus L, a long list, minus capital A, a long list with the dotted files, with the hidden file. And then here with the D, I'm saying that don't go into the directory, but open only, but show me only the directory names. And then I'm saying that actually along all the lists that you're trying to show me, catch for me everything what starts with the dots, but then after that comes whatever, but my second character cannot be a dot. Why it happens like this? That if I will try to do like this, then it automatically will be giving me also this one. And I don't want this one because two dots in Linux notation would mean the parent character, parent directory. And it, would, it will start open for me everything well, in my case, it's smart enough. It doesn't go really up. It doesn't go really up. But uh, in some browsers, in some situations, it will go up. And so to be on the safe side, we usually put this one. So that was the that was the correct answer. To be, I mean, this is a kind of bulletproof solution. So don't respect to that one. Stat file, explorer stat file output. We actually did it already. So, but let's try it once again. So I go back to my demo space. I go back to my uh, stats, stats, hello. 
hello shell. And once again, uh, exploration actually gives you very much uh, the uh, touch, uh, the information about the uh, meta information. Actually, here you can also see what's the difference for the touch. Touch file will should change this axis time. Let's see what will happen. Just touch hello and start again. And you can see that this was over here, 0 0.37, now it's 14.15. It's a good trick. It's a good trick in a sense that, you know, sometimes, for instance, the some uh, <clears throat> some big guys at CAC or at some other uh, also institutions, they decide, okay, let's, uh, let's put it this way. So everything what is older than a half a year will be removed from that in that directory. And from the user perspective, everything what you have to do is just to go with the touch for all the files that you want to keep. And so nobody will know actually that you didn't touch them explicitly, but just use this trick. So that's just uh, some something for you to take to take out of the session. So the rest was, except this one, somehow it's not stuck. I was tells the directory has permission. Okay, ls minus ld tells you that directory has permission like this. Do group members have access there? Uh, not actually. So the tricky thing is that, which I haven't touched yet and haven't explained. Uh, so uh, that's the s bit of over here. So that's the set GUID, but uh, the difference in notation. So if the S is capital, that means that X is missing. So that means that this directory is not searchable. So if directory would be searchable and with the S bit set, S would be small. That's a little bit tricky, but you will find it out when you test it out. So in this situation, the answer is negative. Group members uh, have read access, but not search access. The, the directory is not searchable and not listable, so they will not have full access in a sense. So a little bit tricky, but this is, comes with the experience. This is what comes with the experience. So I click the next. And I want to go with you through the find utility. It's very Unixy. So, I mean, it's, uh, I can name just a few, uh, there, there are actually not a few, there are quite maybe about 10 of those in this kind of utilities, which are very long time history, which have very long time history from the Unix times and which have been migrated to the, uh, uh, to the Linux and which keep going uh, along with the Linux and which are kind of irreplaceable. So they're very Unix in this sense and find is one of them. Then grep is one of them, PS is one of them, and uh, tar is one of them, and then maybe a little, you can make a list longer, but this is kind of things which can be found on any operating system which has the roots from the from Unix, and Linux is just one of them. It can find you everything on the file system. It can um, can be run with no options then it will just list you everything what is found. Like for instance, if I do find, I will see every single file and directory which is in there. But find itself is very complex. And this is kind of a, a language, uh, Boolean language, uh, which can uh, be, uh, which can put lots of filters uh, for the sake of searching the directories and files and lots of, uh, execution commands which can actually do something with the uh, execution on the on top of the what has been found in the results uh, as i told you already so it, you can do it with no options but you can also do it uh, with the options so the first option to do is that for instance if you want to see something from the very particular directory so i try to find everything in etc oh let me and go back to already one that we have already used, user bin. So all the commands that are accessible by you on the system, or most of them, not all of them, but most of them, user bin. Okay, that's fine. That's the list of the files that we can find. But let's try to now apply something 
and make a filter. So I'm looking for something which is has name, uh, let it be, I don't know, uh, let it be something which will start with the T and then will continue with anything. So the quotation here is quite important. So use this notation just as I'm writing. So now you can see that we have found everything what is P. So far it's not doing anything else than LS can do, but then we can go more deeply, deeper and already say something <laughs> like, let it be uh, type F. So we need to specific we specifically say that it's a file, okay? Then we specifically say that this file and it should be no more or the no more than one megabyte, okay? And then actually we also say that, okay, let it be uh, not only no more than one megabyte, but it also no older than, I don't know, no, let it be 30 days, something. M type, no, M time, sorry. And the list of these filters is really long. I mean, on top of that, you can, of course, uh, say that it belongs to the user. Like, for instance, I must say it belongs to the root. And then I can say that it has permission, um, which well, as be set for the user, which is not uh, over here cor correct, but uh, you can change it to something else. So the list of these potential filters and sorting parameters is very long. As usually you can do, go to the find manual and see what's there. And the manual is so long, and it even has a list of the uh, examples that you may find useful by the end of the day, that I just encourage you to go to this manual and read it and see what uh, useful you can find out of there. Uh, the message to take away from this one is find is a standard de facto for searching the files on the file system. So if you use bash, you must know how to use find. So there will be a lot of example over here. So for instance, some of them I already told you, but then uh, some good examples. So if you put dot, dot, remember dot is nothing else, dot is nothing else than your current directory. You can skip it, of course, but uh, usually you put it just to uh, say it explicitly. So now let's say that I'm looking for something in the current directory and then let's skip size, etc. And only type file or type directory. So I can't list only directories, only the files. And then uh, let's apply something. So one option to use with the find is the exec. Exec allows to do something with the results of the search. So for instance, I have found all the directories and I want to change more for those directories. And what I'm doing here, I'm here usually using this specific syntax, which is by find change mode. And for instance, I want to share and want to make sure that all the other users, they actually have read and execute and the search options for the for the directory. So the change mode, and now comes cryptic. So this double curly brackets, they replace the outputs of the search. And then this uh, cryptic thing just finishes up this change mode exec constructions. Just remember this. I mean, this is kind of a specific Boolean programming language of find and you learn it and you will find it useful. And then as well, I can put probably minus V and which is making the change mode output verbose. So I'm getting more information, more detailed information about what's going on, what's being done by the change mode. 
And so you can see, first of all, find has found all the directories in my current directory, and then has changed it to something suitable. In my situation, all of them have been already in the okay state, so you can see that they have been retained. But then, I don't know, if I want to do something more stupid, uh, like for instance, give also the right privileges, then already will be the change has been, will be done properly. So, but I don't want this, so I want to remove, make a minus, but at least to, for the sake of demonstration that this also works and this also possible. So find the best way to find out how it works. Uh, another one good example, which I want to just copy paste from this one is find all as beaded executable binaries. And again, we are using our as been and been and as been. So actually one more notation, how to put this in the correct way could be this one. You remember previously I've done it this way, but you can do it as much as as well as as we can on the on the on the command on the materials page so what i'm doing here i'm going for the user bin and as bin it's written over here then i say that everything what i'm looking for should be file and that file that you find for me it must have permissions user must be executable, must have execution execute, <clears throat> execution permission, and then the S bit on top of that. Let's see what's there. And voila, we actually found quite a few of them. And again, from the security perspective, that makes sense to check those files time to time. It's actually all the utilities that are taking care about security, they're changing, they're checking the security that set bit is not really set on any files which is not uh, part of the normal system and not kind of installed by any of the cracker okay now you know another one useful over here you'll take a look at the material for instance if you want to remove all files older than seven days i don't want to play with that one just to not delete anything uh, uh accidentally but at least you know that it's there okay so the i want to go for the pressimo once again uh you have something in your mind uh one thing to remember so another one thing that i don't didn't mention is that the exclamation mark exclamation mark in all the situations that stands for the negation so that means that everything except so basically what I'm doing here with this command, so I'm saying that find me everything in my home directory, which does not belong to me. Uh, it could be possible. So let's try it. You can try it as well in your own. So I have nothing that wouldn't belong to me, but let's uh, try to do it also on this uh, uh, as being and being directory and see everything which does not belong to root so there is no one file which that which wouldn't belong to root which is good so that's that's the correct behavior in both in both cases there is nothing that wouldn't be that wouldn't be be in mine in my home and there is nothing that wouldn't belong to root in the usr bin and as being well let me go with you once again for the personal and see that are you up for the find? Where's my find? Here, here you go. So try to react.
We will have something like 20, 30 seconds. Yeah, there is a good question about touch and there is a good thing about the reply with the find. So that's exactly what you want to do. Uh, touch, uh, just keep answering. I will keep talking here in the background. So if you touch one file, it will be uh, it will be just single file. Touch doesn't have uh, this option minus R. So what to do? to do is uh, the medicine for that would be find. So you can say that please find everything in my directory. You can even skip the F so you can just see the directories as well, both of them and say that exec and touch every single thing. Oh, I don't know, well, maybe type, yes, maybe type F is needed since that touch probably will not work with the directory. And so, that would work for you eventually. So you can make an analysis, you can make a, a kind of script or, or just a function out of this one and use it. Okay, let's try to go through the pressing mode. Uh, the first was find always requires a directory name to search from and fails with no arguments. It's not correct. So one uh, one trick over here, you can you have the keyboard and you have the terminal open. Just try it out. Essentially, with no comments, uh, with no options, it will just give you the information from the common from the current from the current directory find name uh, gpeg with the wild mark will find in the current directory all files that have gpeg extension that's correct and then we have a negation and actually that's one of the example that we already touched uh, during the demo so find then negation then username finds all files in the directory that do not belong to you yeah uh, correct and but not fully correct it will find also the directories and the subdirectories not only the files but i would say that it's uh, true find work type 
blah, 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 finds all the directories in the work that have as big set for the group. I've just tried it. And I just don't remember exactly the syntax. So let's see that I have the LS LA. So I, you can see that I have only one folder which has the special as big set. So in my case, this minus will still provide me everything. So that's probably means that uh, uh, in syntax of this find, you should have plus, which say explicitly that it uh, has and one of others as well as big. So if we have minus over here, here I would need to say explicitly that what kind of permissions it is have uh, it has. And not only so, I mean, this is a little bit cryptic, but you, when you find it out how to do that once and when you copy paste this uh, commands to to your bash apps here, to your some, to your own notes so you don't remember it anymore but otherwise you just go to the find manual page and see that uh, term and then how to use it and you will see the description exactly what the plus minus equal or slash means so they, they can be some of them a combination of them find search is case intensive uh, no that's not correct by default it is uh, case intensive so you must say it explicitly uh, if you want it to be case intensive, so you must say explicitly that I don't remember was it minus i or something. So, so that it's the and then find does not follow sim links. Uh, it doesn't. That's correct. That's correct. One option also to tell you so ls lfs find for instance um since this original course has been prepared for the for the for the uh, triton users on the triton we are using mostly uh, work directory and work directory is something different it's not normal ext or ext ext3 ext4 xfs file system as you can see it on your own uh, uh, on your own laptop or desktop. So on the uh, Triton, we're using the high-performance computing file system called Lustre. So that's the uh, optimized for the parallel computing. And over there, you have a special utility. Find itself, which comes for the EXT and the others. This is not very efficient, but we have the LFS find. So why I'm saying this, and this is specifically saying for the Triton users, uh, specifically saying for the users of uh, CEC resources or Alton, or for instance, other university resources uh, at, uh, in, in Finland. So that you get actually uh, uh, more efficient uh, from the user perspective and also from the system administrator's perspective. So you'd better use the specific implementation of find, like for instance, LFS find, so that stands for the Lustre file system. Uh, why I'm referencing to this, so that you know that the find utility is actually so popular that it has been implemented even for different operating, so, uh, even for different, optimized for different file systems. So whenever you are on the big HPC cluster or you're dealing with some really cute uh, storage system so that makes sense to find out what kind of search utility you have over there and which one is the most uh, most uh, efficient over there so the locate uh, i can mention also to you another one uh, on many systems you can use locate so it's a kind of uh, quicker one so but it requires some stuff from the system administrator. So the hash for this one should be created in the first place. But I mentioned it just to, so that you know that this exists and at some point, I don't, I don't know if do we have it on the locate, I don't know, it's trapping. Uh, it's not even installed by default on the other installations, but on many workstations, on many other installations, it does, for instance, I have it at home. Okay. 
so we have find over here so my plan was to also to touch the file archiving and then give the exercise but exercise we are a little bit too late and this is a good thing because i can actually go and see uh, and take a look at the modifying permissions the advanced mode so i will spend now probably 10 15 minutes maybe 10 minutes at most on the advanced permissions and then we will uh, then we will finish a bit early because i also just noticed that i didn't have another break at two o'clock so you saved for yourself 10 minutes and i apologize for that and then but we will just finish 10 minutes early but we still have 10 minutes to go and let me tell you something about access control list so this feature is not new but it's not yet standard de facto so if you uh, remember i told you about this octets for the user group and the others and then advanced control list acl uh, makes one step further it allows actually setting the permissions for the file the way you want so basically we can have uh, uh, file owners more than one we can have group owners more than the one and their permissions can be set in the way we want to the tricky thing over here is that uh, not all file systems support this especially when we are talking about the shared file systems i mean the kind of common local file systems on the linux like ext3 ext4 xfs vtrfs what else there as gfs uh, or what, what was the name so they all do it but then for instance if it's something like shared file system and it's shared through some protocol then it could it be a trouble because that depends pretty much on the protocol which is used to share that file system and whether it supports ASL or not. And that's the issue why when we are talking about permission of users, change mode, change group, change own, you mask, etc. because it's still standard de facto which is used by every single file system, even the network file systems. But then on the local file systems, you can still be okay with the ACL. ACL brings you two commands, get toggle and set toggle. Essentially, the first one is to get the parameters for the access list and the other one for setting the parameters for the access list. And what's the difference when you do some changes to the file and you will see that at the end of this line, there will be plus plus means that access list has been initiated and the changes have been done by default it's not so let's see i for instance get i will try to get tackle and let me try the hello sh nothing else i can see it's only the standard ones standard user standard group standard others and nothing else okay i want to be uh, for instance i want to set the permissions not only for myself but for someone else let it be a root even if it doesn't matter so root really have access to the that ticker but i still want to be a, a, an owner of that uh, hello sh what i'm doing here so I'm using the special utility for setting up the access list parameters. And you can grab the thing from here. So there is no need to do anything else. And so what I'm saying here, please, I'm first of all, I'm saying that this is the modification mode. So I'm modifying, modifying the parameters over here. Then what I'm saying that I'm modifying the user then i'm saying who is the user and then i'm saying what i'm setting for that user so and let it be the full set of parameters so now it's like this let's see what has happened to the 
uh, notation over here. So you've got the plus. Plus means that something has been done with the access list. And now you can see the access list actually has changed a little bit from the previous stage. Here you have on the user group other, but here I also got the additional user root and with additional special permissions, which is fine. In the same way, I can do it also for the group. Let me say that I want this uh, known to you as group. And what has happened over here that actually along with my default group, also the VAS group has got the permissions. So keep it in mind that on some systems you can use it. There are actually quite many things that you, quite many systems you can use it. Be careful because sometimes when the directory is shared, this will not work. And you will probably notice that it doesn't work only when somebody will send you an email that there is no access while well, you're thinking that there should be. But anyway, that's one of the things to keep in mind that these kind of things are possible. And again, so the as uh, with the change mode the change group, you can modify only the files that belong to you. So you can only give access to the user that belongs to uh, to the group that belongs to you, or you are part of that group. And then also, mm, well, there are these kind of limitations. So so to say that set faculty and get faculty. Well, get faculty it's for everyone, but set faculty, I would say that's the most efficient in the in the hands of the system administrator. So 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 let me see do we have any do we have any good question that we need to still overcome? Yeah, there was very good remark actually on this um uh when you ls again you sometimes you see nothing like dash over here like minus over here that means that's the file and then if at the very beginning that's l uh, that's d that means a directory and then if it would be l that means that's a link i can still say if you watch about link because i skipped that part but i can still say so link is something which gives you, there was an example, uh, symbolic link. So for instance, I want to make a link to a file, let it be file new and let it be a name like file new link dummy but anyway and now you can see that actually uh, in my current directory i've got the link file new link uh -huh. yeah that was a hard link sorry and now i have to explain you because difference between hard link and symbolic link so the hard link Imagine that every single file, it's just the object. Uh, it's just a storage object in the sense that there is only uh, some, some special uh, place on the physical device, on the physical hard drive, where this piece of the information is kept. And from the file system point of view, you can make links, hard links we call it, in the sense that you just make a pointer from this directory, from this file name to that information, or from this file name to exactly the same information. And this is what I've said you, okay, then the number of links is, uh, that's the that's the number that comes after the permissions. So basically you know that to the same file, to the same portion of information on the physical hard disk, there are two pointers from different places. And in my case, I have created the LN, uh, a link from the, uh, for, uh, a link to the same place from the file new, a file new link from the, uh, from the parent directory. 
I can do also a symbolic link. Let's do it locally. Sim link as a test. So now you can see that actually I have created a sim link, which not really a pointer to that information, but pointer to a pointer. So that's a little bit more complicated, but that's the two different options. And here exactly what you see when you see this minus uh, this L without the minus L without the D. So that thing means that the object that you're looking at is a symbolic link. In case of symbolic link, in case I've, I'm removing the file new, for instance, over here, you can see that the symbolic link will simply become broken. So file new doesn't exist anymore, but this sim ceiling is, oh, ceiling, okay. Still exists, but it just doesn't lead me anywhere. So there is no, there is nothing behind that. Yeah. And then on the top of that, if you look at the hard link, what was it, file, new, hard link, it's still there simply because that was a pointer to actually to the object. Uh, but you can see now that the uh, links to the same object has been left only one. I know it's a little bit complicated. I know, the, and this is exactly why I was trying to avoid this explanation. But anyway, now you know because somebody has asked, so it's not me, it's somebody who has asked. Okay, now we are pretty much done. And since taking into account that 10 minutes break wasn't taken, so we are pretty much in time. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow we will come back to this uh, several utilities. We will come back to the uh, exercises. We will look at the file transfer. We will look at archivation. And then we will look at different utilities and then how to work with the input and output, whether it's pipes, then there will be a grouping, then there will be uh, uh, some booleans, and then finally we go to the grep and there will be another one exercise. So we still have pretty much a distant portion to do for tomorrow as well, but that's will be interesting okay anyway so it's done for today feel free to leave feedback or yet ask something on the notes notes will stay there anyway for today for tomorrow and so if something will remain unanswered we will do this otherwise see you tomorrow guys and girls